Hi, I'm Ben Prest from the Australian Commission on Safety and Quality in Healthcare, and I'm here today to talk about our e-poster on the National Safety and Quality Digital Mental Health Standards. Australia is a world leader in digital mental health services with many evidence-based and effective offerings with benefits for users, including access, ease of access, convenience, and anonymity. There are concerns and risks, however, expressed in the literature and in our consultations with stakeholders related to privacy, data security, lack of evidence, and variability in quality for some services. Healthcare consumers we know have expectations about the standard of care provided to them, regardless of the delivery method. And there has not previously been a national approach in Australia to quality assurance for these services. This has led the Commission to develop these standards. So first of all, what do we mean by a digital mental health service? Our definition is a mental health, suicide prevention, or alcohol and other drug service that uses technology to facilitate engagement and the delivery of care. And there are a broad range of services within this definition that provide information, counselling, peer-to-peer support, and treatment. And this can be delivered by telephone, video, online, SMS, or through apps. There are some services that are excluded from the scope, so general health and wellbeing services, not specific to mental health, suicide prevention, or alcohol and other drugs, uh, and other digital services like electronic medical records and clinical decision support software. So the development process has been through research, consultation, and piloting of the standards. The consultation process was broad and included consumers, carers, clinicians, service providers, technical experts, and other experts in the field. Um, we built on the National Safety and Quality Health Service Standard, given their established position in the healthcare system in Australia, as the accreditation standards used for hospitals and other health services. Uh, the process was really about distilling the key clinical and technical issues for digital mental health services. And we refined those from our consultations by working with our digital mental health advisory group, and a technical expert working group, which guided the development of the technical actions in particular. Uh, our stakeholders emphasised that the standards needed to balance quality assurance with the ability of digital services to be innovative and agile, which we know is one of the benefits of this sector. We conducted two pilots with a range of digital mental health service providers, so a self-assessment pilot and a pilot with assessments run by third-party accrediting agencies. And at this point, I would like to acknowledge that Dr. Peggy Brown was our senior clinical advisor on this project and was instrumental in the development of these standards and getting us to this point. So thank you, Peggy. So what's in the standards? There are three standards and 59 actions that integrate clinical and technical elements. So the clinical and technical governance standard uh, covers things like leadership and governance, safety and quality systems, risk and incident management, but also privacy, information security, stability, and continuity, specific to the digital space. The partnering with consumer standard covers healthcare rights, informed consent, partnerships with consumers and carers, but also usability and accessibility. And finally, the model of care standard covers the delivery of care in the digital space, the evidence base for the model of care used, and recognizing and responding to acute deterioration. So these standards and the actions in them apply at the level of the service provider. So that means that if you have multiple service types, say an app, phone service, or an online service, you would get accredited for once to cover all of these digital mental health services. They're voluntary standards, and again, we're focusing on quality improvement, but we'll look to incentivize uptake with service providers driven through consumer, carer, and clinician choice of services that are accredited, and through policy and funding leaders from different Australian governments. The standards were launched in November 2020, along with a range of resources that are available on our website, and there will be a link at the end of this presentation for that. The next steps are that we're looking to start accreditation assessments in mid-2022, and those assessments will be conducted by approved accrediting agencies under the existing Australian Health Service Safety and Quality Accreditation Scheme. Services that are accredited will get a quality mark so that users in the marketplace will be able to see whether they've been accredited or are working towards accreditation. And there will be public information about these accredited services available. 
We're looking at the potential to use these standards as a module for the National Safety and Quality Health Service standards and for services already accredited for those standards, and also considering their broader application, so to the broader digital health and telehealth space. So thanks everyone for listening. If you want to find out more, please get in touch with us via the email address or visit our website.